Welcome to This Just In, the show bringing you the latest advancements in healthcare, strategy, innovation, and public policy. And now, for the fastest voice in healthcare, here's your host, Justin Barnes. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to This Just In. I'm your host, Justin Barnes. In these segments, I bring you the latest advancements in healthcare, strategy, corporate growth, and innovation. Today, we're broadcasting from the mobile This Just In studios on the Business Radio X network as well as the Healthcare Now radio network. We're recording live outdoors to practice safe social distancing. So if you hear any background noise, it's real. It's the world that we're in today. For this episode, though, my 208th episode, we have a very special guest returning, Brett Hunsaker. Brett is known as Mr. Smooze and has been doing sales and marketing as well as leadership of sales executives for over 30 years, based right here in Atlanta, primarily focusing on commercial real estate and the parking business. Besides being an all-around great guy and true sales expert, Brett is also the subject of a book by Richard Abraham called Mr. Smooze, The Art and Science of Selling Through Relationships. I love hosting these shows on best practices, so let's certainly uh, dive in. But, well, first of all, before I go on, welcome to the show, my good friend. Well, it's good to be here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You could take your mask off. I got, I'm sorry. We are 6.2 6. 6. 2 feet away from each other, and I I am now social distance, and I had the mask off. So I'm looking forward to uh, another great chat with you and uh, another beautiful day in Georgia. It's a wonderful time. Amen. We are outdoors, um, so I'm sure you'll hear the birds chirping, the squirrels running, uh, maybe a dog or two barking, and certainly a lot of lawn blowers, but all good. Um, leaf blowers, but all good. Um, so I've actually uh, known Brett for over 15 years. We became close friends during a Metro Atlanta chamber trip. I think it's about eight years ago. Um, is that true? Yeah, about eight years. Yeah. yeah. So we're sitting around one day, and actually our wives first suggested that we do a show because Brett and I um, tend to pop back and forth with each other. There's <laughs> a lot of comments, and either we could be this could be a great show or go really poorly. The first one went really well, so I think this will go pretty well. I, I'm looking forward to it, absolutely, <laughs> especially in these times. Have some fun. You got it, exactly. So Brett possesses a great in-depth knowledge and expertise in sales, marketing, business development, corporate development. So certainly we're going to touch on that today, on looking for best practices and really seeing you know, how the world's changing, relationships building's changing. I'm calling this show Relationship Building in a Virtual World. Uh, and it's, it's something very real. It's when you get out there and, and you talk to people, certainly in corporate development, business development, sales, or just building companies, um, even leading organizations, uh, it's coming up on a daily basis, and, or at least should be. If it's not, you might be in trouble. Uh, but it, it, the questions come up, how, do I, how can I most effectively lead, collaborate, um, bring our cultures together? We do have a very divisive um, country right now, uh, which is really unfortunate. However, we still have to build companies. We still have to build communities. And we have to do our very best every single day. So I'm looking very forward to this show, um, understanding what best practices are out there. I've done a lot of research over the past uh, month or so on this. Again, a virtual world. How do we do this? What are some of the best practices? So let's just start off with that, Brett. I mean, I know um, you've got a lot of expertise here, and you've been shifting some of your model recently as well. So why don't you yeah, well, I, I, it, it, great input. I you know my whole career of you know 35 years in in the world of uh, you know, sales and marketing has really been one-on-ones. I, I think that's been how you best build yep. relationships. And in today's world, that that you just it's it's very hard and far between. You can still find that, but it's not as easy as it has been in the past. So you have to fine tune your skills to use what you would do one-on-one, and then develop that into finding alter alternatives to build those relationships. That's the hardest part right now, and a lot of people are doing it. And I mean, again. If you know Zoom, you know Skype, you know Microsoft Teams. They've got all these things now where you're going to have a, a, a yourself in a, in a in a in some kind of box talking and trying to understand how to build a relationship. I think the biggest learning point I have learned over the last few months is to listen. I, I yeah. think mm-hmm. salespeople a lot of times, even in one-on-one situations, always say the word "I," "me," "my company," as opposed to listening. Take this time in the virtual world to finally. Shut up and listen. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, I actually had the problem early on on Zoom calls or whatever, trying to do what I do, but it doesn't work unless you listen. And if you listen, there's a lot of things that you can learn from that that can then help you build a relationship. And that's the, you know, if you get out of the end of this thing and we're all back in going full bore and have 10 new relationships out of it because you did the right things, 
your sales and your marketing is going to be through the roof once we get back into the the new norm, as they say. So I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about some specifics yeah. of that issue. I think that's actually a specific right there. Listen, uh, and I actually wrote that down because that when that goes back to sales 101, um, certainly in relationship building and sales and BD, the, cu- the customer, um, the prospect, they'll tell you what they want a lot of times, but you have to shut up long enough to listen. So that's number one. And I think one of the biggest things also you mentioned, uh, and I completely agree with you, you mentioned those modalities, uh, Zoom, FaceTime, Skype, uh, all the different ones out there, um, Google Meet, uh, Go to Meeting. Uh, turn the camera on. So now I notice a lot of people still, they're, they're shy for different reasons or don't want to do it or just used to, you know, just talking on the phone or maybe they're, you, they're using Zoom or one of those other modalities, but they're actually on the camera on and it's really hard to build a relationship. And the, now I'm starting to really understand this. And again, I've been studying this now for the past month pretty heavily because I've seen people do things I've never seen them do in business in 25 years. And I realized what it was like they just customers not making the right decision or, you know, acting in a really strange way that never seen an act. I mean, even against what we've signed in contracts and, and agreements and our, in what it is, is the relationship's not there. When you have a deep relationship with somebody, they're not going to get squirrely. They're going to, you know, they're going to communicate this. Hey, this isn't working well. And, and I just noticed this in multitudes of different pieces of different businesses that I'm in, people are acting differently than they ever have before. And yeah. it becomes, it's, I boil it down to, you don't have a stronger relationship a lot of them have maybe not met me or my team or somebody else personally, so they don't have that bond, they don't have that, that, that tie. And when you don't have that tie and that bond, then you may react differently to like they're a stranger. Oh, they're just a stranger. It doesn't really matter what's written down or whatever. No, you don't operate like that. That's not a good way to lead your organization. Uh, and so I think that's what it comes back to, hey, what can we do differently in, in this new world is turning the camera on, getting to know people, building that relationship. And that's what made me think of you and wanted to come and do this radio show again. So yeah, I, I, I just love it. And I and it's funny, I uh, the uh, as I've learned how to use these things, you know, there, you can put any backdrop. Yeah, Brett's in, older, so yeah, it yeah. takes him a bit longer. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it is one of those things where you can actually, you know, as you all know, you can put a backdrop, any backdrop you want. Um, and so, on most of them, I yeah, realize right. some don't, yeah, and yeah. so I'm trying to switch action. Yeah, so if you can, if you can, and I know on Zoom you can, yes, and, you can. and, and yeah. customize it. Yes. Put something back there that's interesting, so people are. That's the first thing. I think I was on one call where I put the the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge fogged in, mm. and th- they all asked about it. So th- th- there's a connection. We're trying to figure out where the connection is, and you work that out as a sales guy or a marketing person. But I, I'll give you a quick story that was interesting to me recently. Uh, there was a pitch on Zoom, and uh, six companies pitched uh, a, a big entity, and uh, let's just say it was down in the Miami area. Uh, five of the guys did their Zoom call, you know, and they were not, you know, not like they would be in a regular presentation. They weren't in a suit. They were, you know, casual. They were in their office, but it was their office. The lighting was dim. The guy that won the account, and I know mm-hmm. him personally, and he's a smart guy, he put the city of Miami behind him, yeah. a, a lit backdrop of the night nightline yeah. of the city, wore a suit and tie. He looked good. He looked professional. And he had a script, and he and he on a pitch. He knew exactly what he wanted to say, and then let them ask questions. And that was his job to be able to answer them. So again, look good, look the part, just mm. like you would in a regular presentation. Don't take this Zoom stuff for granted. I mean that that everyone's equal. You don't have to be equal. You can supersede someone else by putting your, your effort out as far as the backdrop and, and handling the presentation. That's excellent. So you just brought up a couple really strong points because another one that I, I didn't think of on my own, but I, I read about a couple weeks ago is icebreakers. So now we're trying to get to know each other better. Again, you have a camera. That's one great way to physically see somebody, begin building that physical relationship with somebody through a Zoom or, or go to meeting or whatever. But... So you just brought up the point about the backdrop and San Francisco. Well, similar to that is get to know people. So they said, always now start off your meetings with a question just about them or making, hey, what's the, you know, if it's a Monday or Tuesday, what you do over the weekend that you enjoy the very most? As an icebreaker, A, you're opening the, you know, opening the door, you get to know each other better. You're sharing um, something about your past or your, your weekend. And then, oh my gosh, you love to run or you love to see a movie, you know, this movie or whatever. You know, what's your latest movie on Netflix or Prime or whatever, you know, or, or cable, whatever. You get to know people. You're breaking the ice. You're breaking down the barriers. And, um, and that's, that's exactly what you did by um, talking about the Golden Gate Bridge and, and that backdrop. And that is the best practice of really breaking Yeah, the and ice. I'll tell you, on the breaking yeah. ice, I, it, it, you can, <laughs> again, you're, it, you know, majority of people, of course, are at home. 
Um, and uh, I started off a meeting. I was just on a, a charity fundraiser for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And uh, on a big Zoom call with all the, 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 the committee and everyone that's going to go out and raise money, I literally I have uh, three uh, King Charles Cavaliers. I put one in my lap. That's and everyone, if you, every, yeah. you know, you, you know, like, you know, 10% of them had dogs, yeah. maybe more that they would admit it. But at least, I, you know, all of a sudden I had people reacting to my dog that gave me credibility when I started talking about what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Now, if you can get the dog to bark, then you can you know, just use that <laughs> and maybe have a fake bark sound somewhere. <laughs> but again, it's the icebreaker. It's trying to connect with someone. And I, and I go yeah. back to something we talked about before, Justin, is in reg- my regular marketing, Anytime you talk to someone, you're always trying to solve something uh, for the four P's, which is, you know, solving a problem for them, yeah. creating something to make them money, profit, or saving them money, or promotion. How can you help them elevate their career with what your product or service does to make them look better? And the number one, and especially in today's world, is passion. That's the mm. fourth P. Yeah. If you can connect with someone's passion on a call, exactly. so if the guy's a golfer and you see the backdrop and he's got it, a, a picture, uh, one guy was on the call, he had a picture of Augusta National, one of the holes. And, I mean, you know the guy's a big golfer then. He's thinking golf. So you, you make those notes. You put them down in writing, by the way. That's yeah. some of the biggest yes. problems we have. But look at all the screens. If people have different things, write them down. Understand, because that's probably what their passion is. If they have some picture of the uh, Eiffel Tower, Leaning Tower of Pisa, they're a traveler. They like going to Europe. Yeah. They, had a, they had a memory there that you want to develop into something as far as helping to build their relationship. So it's not even just listening, it's visual cues yes, yes. if you see it on there. And again, I agree with you. I think I was on a go-to meeting call and they don't have any video. No, but then the other guy had his phone on, so there was the feedback. Yeah. yeah. I mean, try to get it to the point where you can see people and they see you because you'll see with certain backgrounds what their passion is. You connect with their passion, you're going to build a relationship. And then when you see them in person, you're already ready to talk about, hey, have you been any... What, what, what's your next travel schedule for 2021? Where are you going next spring? You got it. You know, that kind of thing. So I think it's a win-win. Well, first of all, send me those, those four Ps because I want to put that in the um, yeah, social oh, media absolutely. for the show. That's excellent. Um, and another part here, and it kind of filters onto that earlier segment we were just talking about, don't be so efficient. This is really tough for me because I like to just dive straight into business, straight into the conversation, you know, straight into my purpose. And, uh, and so a new best practice uh, is don't be so efficient. Get to know the other person. You because I also was explaining this to one of my teams um, actually this week, and literally uh, we talked. Uh, you know, I said you know when you go to meet somebody in their office, you can see their plaques on yeah. the wall. You can see their picture of their children. Zig Ziglar one on one. You got you, it. You look around. You know what you got. You got it. Well, that's not what we can and do. And body language. And you, right? I brought, I you are language. the best yeah. about reading body language. Correct, exactly. I'm not really as good at that, but you, yeah. you see, you can see, you, that, yeah. that's how you develop a relationship. You got right? it. Body language is big. And that's actually what I, that's the example I brought up to my team is going, hey, you know, I can't, I like to read their body language. I can see all about that when I'm in the room with them. Well, I can't do that. Well, unless I have the camera on. So I went back to why, you know, you use the camera, but then, and also you can tell people ahead of time. You don't want to ambush somebody and go, hey, turn on your camera right now. You want to say, hey, we have a meeting tomorrow or, or next week or in an hour. I'm going to have the camera on. Would you like, you know, feel free to have your yep. camera on. You don't have to pressure them, but just feel free to have your camera on. Um, that's a good best practice. But for me to learn, I had to learn, don't be so efficient. Go in there and seriously ask that question. Ask that icebreaker. Get to know them. Because, again, I'm right. I get done a business. I like that. But yeah, no, I, perfect. I, I have to change that. So um, I think the next thing is, uh, and you and I, this is kind of transitioning the segment of some of the best practices. We covered some there. But as the next level is, we do need to get back out there. You and I are both the relationship guys. We're relationship builders. We do believe in that personal, you know, the, 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 those personal visits, that, that face-to-face when we can do it. So, now, again, do everything as safely as possible. Uh, you obviously want to keep yourself safe. And I do. I don't quarantine myself, but I, and I'm out and about. But I also, I'm very measured in where I go, who I'm with, um, what I do. I stay as safe as humanly possible. So, you know, I take care of them. I also take care of myself. And we'll probably touch on that a little bit, little bit too, because it's a great networking opportunity um, that we'll talk about. But... You can also ask people, you know, if you're in a state or a city or an area where you have opened up a little bit more, you can ask, hey, would you mind if I visited? Or maybe because I work with a lot of health systems, hospitals, physician practices and clinics, you shouldn't be going in there. You know, even now school districts, I work with a lot on the whole telehealth side. So we don't visit school districts because so, but you can say, hey, can we visit? And if they say, well, yes, you can come in during these hours or this in this procedure, you can come visit or 
Um, no, we're not accepting guests right now or, or any visitors for these reasons. You know, obviously understand. But we can meet for dinner or we can meet for breakfast. We can meet for lunch outside in a safe environment. Uh, and you can do that. So, again, you can start building those relationships, building that rapport, building that personal bond, even though we're staying safe. So. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, it's, it's, and again, for salespeople out there, it's tough to get that one-on-ones now. The call, you're waiting for the callback. I, as you know, uh, Jess, I'm uh, the chief development officer for Pinnacle Parking and Transportation. Yep. We park cars, you know, so I'm calling on building owners, property managers, maybe leasing agents. But, you know, it's hard because, again, they're trying to open up their building. There's no cars in the lot, so are they going to call me back? So I would tell you this. For the sales guys out there, an interesting play right now would be association meetings. I mean, we all have associations, mm -hmm. and they all have either monthly or quarterly meetings. Mm -hmm. In the past, it would be a cocktail party, 35, 40 people. And you probably, if you're a really good salesman and really know how to work a room, you're going to meet five or six people, really meet them. Yeah. Now you have an opportunity on a call, especially one of these Zoom calls or whatnot, to listen in, see 45 or 50 people talking about a topic. You can always offer your services to that group to talk about your topic, which I've done a couple times. And But the cool thing is, you got you're meeting forty five people at once when they're in, in everyone that talks listen, write down the information, see if one of those things hits a problem, passion, profit, or promotion, and and, and if you could connect with those guys after the meeting and deliver some uh, content to them, right. you know if somebody does you know somebody before the call or after it's always the best five minutes before and after where people are just loose and they're talking about what they're going to do or what they're what they're doing, and you find something that they like or they're you know, they, they just found out that their son or daughter's soccer team is going to be practicing again. You, can, The internet and content is huge. You can be sending that person after that call, hey, I heard about your soccer thing. Send them something about that 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 entity that, that would work for their kid. I mean, now you're connecting. And by the time when we're all out of this thing and we're all meeting again, they're going to remember the one person that listened to what they were saying and followed up with it. No, that's fantastic. And for, the, for those of you joining us a little late, my guest today is sales and marketing expert, Brett Hunsaker, a.k.a. Mr. Smooze. So one thing he's made me think of, and this is another best practice in changing in our new world, is when you're on these calls with Zoom or whichever one uh, you choose, write down your name and the name of your company. A lot of people just put Justin or, you know, Frank or Johnny. Or yeah, whatever. I had mine said Laptop 7. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or on exactly. the well, yeah, iPad. You're right. iPad 7, I'm going, yeah, and yeah. I'm looking at it going, everyone else has, an, you know, you're yes. right. You got to put in, because yeah. that's a marketing piece. They know who you are that's what you right. do. That's Great right. idea. Yeah, so put your first and last name, and then probably even your company yeah. name. So that's one thing um, I've learned over the last uh, month as well. So <clears throat> diving into some of the additional, um, got about seven, eight minutes here to go. So I'm um, diving into some additional best practices, and we'll have to maybe do a follow-up show because there's lots of great content here. But um, and how do you really, you know, get out? Because if you aren't, you know, you can't go out there, you can't knock on doors like you usually do to get the, the leads. So some of the best practices that I've kind of come up with over the last uh, month or so is, you know, really making sure that you're referral based. You're getting out there, you're finding those people, you know, the networks that you've invested in over the last yeah. 20, 30 years, you're an expert at this. How do you get your friends to, to or your contacts uh, to refer? So, and I call them, quote unquote, you know, endorser people. People are going to get out there and endorse your product, endorse you. Um, and I think LinkedIn is a very big component for yep. that. And to, how do you best leverage the network that you've built over the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years and then um, turn that into uh, to, to leads and, and branding and promotion? for yeah, I, I call it action to warm calls. There you go. you, you got to be able to, and I, I do this a lot for friends of mine, and especially now that are out <laughs> looking for a job. I'll, I'll literally send out something that says outstanding blank, whatever the position is. I just did one for a property manager. I got one for an asset manager in real estate. And I send that out to my LinkedIn. I send it out. I repost. By the way, yes. just to let it, you know, always repost something that you like. Right. When yes. you repost it, it gets to all of your people. You look like an expert in what you do. So, but again, I, I think that if you can put yourself in a position to help people or, and the, but that's helping you because you're giving them a quality candidate, it's opening up the warm calls. It's the referrals. So then they got your mind, your name's on their top of their mind because they just said, now for me, it's parking. They said, well, yeah, Brett's doing parking. He just gave me two good candidates that I should look at. Maybe we should, you know, get with him and talk about our parking. So I think it's a win-win in that situation. And also, I think you do a good job of it, is that you got to find venues where you can right now network. You know, forget, mm -hmm. and there's some bars you could probably do it. Or the old places we use. Now there's a lot of stuff. The number one, I read this last week, the number one place right now, outdoor networking, 
is around the country is horseback riding. The, the horseback <laughs> riding people are going nuts. And I, this was a story out of Chicago. But again, you find something in the end. If they're not yep. a horseback rider, don't like horses, don't do it. But if they do, and they can actually bring their family out, right. you're going to have two hours on a trail, social distancing, you wear your mask, but you're going to build a relationship and you're going to have the family there. So it's a win-win for everybody. And I think you do it very well. I think you have a running group yep. that you go out and run with. It's all social distancing, but it's. It, I, I've heard about it from other people that have asked me, hey, you heard? have you heard about Justin's yeah. network running group? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I have a running group and a walking group. So, yeah, yeah we actually, you know, we'll walk. I would do the walking group. With you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, we go 12 maybe. miles. Well, no, I, We're going I, today. You're I could do one mile, us. but maybe. Anyway. Yeah. No, I have a, I have a great group um, of executives here in Atlanta. Uh, this started during COVID, and uh, we just said, you know what, Let's we want to get outside more, and we also want to see each other. But, yeah, we want to be safe, we want to be socially distanced. And so we'll walk 10 to 12 miles around Atlanta through Buckhead and all the up and down different streets and now we're called the walking crew, and then there's a, it's a pretty large group that now sees us even around Buckhead. Um, but it's cool, but you also get there, and so we're, we're spending two and a half, this takes us two, two hours, two and a half hours. You know, we have, you know, three to five CEOs every single time, and we're always sharing best practices, we're sharing business advice, um, life advice. Yeah, relationship. personal relationships. You got it. Too, and yeah. so, and, and so we're all getting smarter. These guys all read a lot. They, you know, like you and I talk always, we're always sharing best practices in business and life. Um, and same thing with these guys. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. A, healthy, um, collaborate, and sharpen your skills in collaboration. That's also something that we've been so now since March or even late February, we're disjointed as a society. We're losing our skills on how to collaborate. It becomes so much about us, me, I'm by myself, I'm home, I get to do what I want to do, I want to do this. And I, that's not a successful recipe for, for business or building a company or even having healthy you know relationships with people. You've got to open yourself up and ensure you're collaborating well with others in, in this tough time. So Yeah, and I'll just, you know, again, as we run run up time here, I would say the one thing I'd like to share, you got to make the connection now for in-person. And be positive, glass half full. Yep. I'd set meetings. I'd be calling people right now and say, hey, listen, if we're okay in late October, November, December, we need to meet. Where can we meet in That's person that, that everyone can feel comfortable with? You know, all the restaurants, especially here in Atlanta, they're all covered up. They all have their stuff. So put yourself in a position now. Now you can make calls and say, hey, if things turn, yeah. we'll schedule it off. Yeah. You can, you know, for that matter, start thinking about point. your spring events, That's things great. you're going to go to when it opens back up. Yeah. But right now, make a connection. Your, your easiest call you can make today is, hey, let's get together the first week of November. Hey, what are you doing right before Thanksgiving? Get and meet those people in person, but do it virtually to start, and then you meet them in person. Once you do that, connect. And if something happens... Then you, you modify the meeting. If they're not comfortable with it, you don't do it. But it gives you the you, – be the first one to make yes. the call to set up a meeting. Yeah. Number one call, set it up now. Yeah. No, that's a good point because also that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You need to get get out there at least and ask the question. Some people say, yeah, I'm one to meet her. I'm, I'm ready to meet her. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be in home. Exactly. I, I will be there tomorrow. You got it. And so I think you'll be shocked at, at that. So that's number one. And, and again – you're, you can do this with 20 people, and two or three may say yes. Well, there you go. You know, Or five people may say yes, or you might be surprised 10 people may say yes. Come into their office, or no, you know, in my office, we're not accepting guests, or my hospital can't accept guests, or health system, whatever, Pre clinic practice. But let's go, to, let's go to lunch. Let's be safe. Let's do it outside. Yep. Um, and certainly, we're coming into the fall season. Weather is nice. A lot of the places, we have storms brewing in some parts. But, you know, this is just, again, it's about getting out there, meeting people. And if you get, they can't do it now, like Brett said, they should be able to do it. Um, in the coming, uh, you know, in the coming months or, you know, whatever. But um, getting closing, you know, we're at, almost at time. I'm going to do a little. Oh, just real here. easy. There's 780 FDO, food and drink opportunities in a year. Hey. Prior to the pandemic, yeah. I was doing 500 of those. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner five days a week. Uh, it, it may have been too many. But you're, you, you're but, back up on them now. Well, you're, you're I'm back, that's where yeah. I'm going. I'm saying right now, yeah. people want to go, and it, it seems the, the number one is breakfast. People get a cup of coffee with you, yeah. and uh, and then it, and lunches are coming, starting to come back. So work your FDOs. Get those numbers up because people, there are a lot of people out there that want to buy from someone that has the, the, the sense to meet in person if it's safe. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for me, uh, for me being able to speak today. I really enjoyed it. No, so food and drink opportunity? It's, it's food and beverage opportunity. Okay. So food. Oh, F F FBO. F FBO. Yep. S A D, no. drink. <laughs> F drink O. Yeah. It could great. be FDO too. Yeah. So now, food and drink opportunities. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, uh, drinks, or yep. dinner. Yep. But I'm telling you, they're out there, and there's some really cool restaurants out there, as we know. Justin yes. and I did it 
ourselves, go somewhere that you've never been. Yeah. That's really cool. That's open. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you if you need to know what they are, Justin has the list, <laughs> and he he can set you up because he, he we went to dinner a couple weeks ago at a place that we've yeah. never been, and it's really cool, and they're open, and it's outside. And it's it, it just a, a great environment, but some that normally people would have never gone to, Correct. but they would now make an exception to go to it. Yep. And if not, I'll, I'll go ahead and put it by plug in. Go to Goldberg's in Atlanta <laughs> because they're oh. the best uh, for my coffee every morning. Yeah. They also have the best uh, salmon in town yeah, yeah, on your right. bagel. They're yeah. excellent. Uh, so, no, uh, thank you, Brett. I completely agree. It, it is about um, just getting out there. It may, you know, maybe getting out of your quote unquote your comfort zone. We get a little bit too complacent, or you say, you, blame, you want to blame everything. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that because of COVID. No, you can't. We're trying to tell you you can. The opportunity is there. Outshine. I also love the part, and I wrote it down. I didn't even kind of follow up on this. Is show up um, looking professional. Maybe wear a suit and tie, a professional background. Beat everybody else out, even if they're in their t-shirts or they're in their you know whatever shirts, exercise shirts. No, beat them out. Dress- I'm in the outdoor studio and I'm wearing a suit. That's very true. I'm not because I'm about to go for my yeah, go my walk. But anyhow, with, with three CEOs, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So anyhow, Brett, uh, thank you so much for joining the show today. I truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us, and thank you everybody for joining us. And please tune in weekdays at 2:30 p.m. Eastern, 11:30 a.m. Pacific to hear our latest shows. As always, you can track me on Twitter at HIT Advisor and use hashtag ThisJustInRadio so we can respond to your comments from the show. If you missed any of this episode or want to hear more, all my shows are available on Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. Also, you can check out the website we just launched at justinbarnes.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a terrific week and stay safe.